Welcome uh, to our live chat. And I'm hoping the new name will catch on. It's not going to be called Let's Talk Gardening anymore. It's going to be Let's, Let's Dish the Dirt. So I think that will go better with my name. Uh, because it's all about things being dirty, right? And I thought Let's Talk Dirty sounds really kind of creepy. So I did not, I did not choose that one. So, hey, welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, let me go back up here. Hi, Mel and Robert and Robin from sunny Chicagoland. Robert, I think we have two. Nope, sorry. I said hi twice, Robert. Uh, Allotted Chef, Margaret Alice, good to see you. Stephen of the Urban White Buffalo Farm, good to have you here. Jace, good to have you from Leeton, The Road to Self-Sufficiency. That's a lovely channel. You should check it out. Uh, Mary Playford, good to see you. Francis and Leanne, look at this. This is great. Hi, Sharon. Anna. Oh, and Mags. Hi, the party can start now. Okay, so I thought today we might talk about pollinators. But I see that you guys have been chatting a bunch uh, already about weeds. Yeah, weeds do love this spring weather, don't they? Where they get lots of rain and they're really not competing yet with anything. So they kind of just take over, don't they? Uh, Robert is saying that he has planted out all except for tender things like squash, toms, and beans. Yep, awesome. Uh, I'm trying to get those out today. We have a break in rain and we have a little bit of warmth. So it's, you know, at this time of year, you gotta juggle the rain and you've gotta juggle the temp. So I think for now we have had our last uh, dipping near near freezing. So I think all of my uh, things that can take it down into the high 30s and low 40s will be doing okay. Uh, yeah, my, my lettuce all looks a bit rough and I'm not quite sure. I don't think they have gotten consistent watering yet. And so I'm hoping that I can make a few changes there and get those up and going again. Uh, oh, Leeton, you're so welcome. I, I really enjoy your channel and you get right to it. So I, I noticed that you were planting strawberries. I think I'm behind in my uh, YouTube watching, but I s saw you planting strawberries in one uh, and I haven't finished that one yet, but no, I like your, your channel's great. Um, Hi, Joanne, Mama's allotment. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, so let's talk a little bit about pollinators. Um, you know, it's very important that we can attract as many pollinators as we can to the garden because for many of the things that we grow, uh, they require pollination. Um, now, those things that require pollination indeed do attract the pollinators because they put out a lovely flower, uh, which encourages them. But there's a couple ways to maybe bring in more pollinators. Oh, I left my other mic on. Okay. Um, to encourage pollinators in other ways as well. And there's a couple things to consider if you really want to make your garden kind of like a pollinator heaven uh, is obviously you want to grow flowers in addition uh, to the, the vegetables that you might be growing that require pollination. Um, and the best plants to plant specifically for pollinators in your area is for you to um, plant native plants to your area. 
because those are the ones that your pollinators uh, will be most drawn to. And by pollinators, I don't just mean bees. I mean butterflies and moths, except for that horrible cabbage white butterfly, which we will not talk about at this very moment, uh, but all of the other ones. So you want to give, let's just talk about, um, we're going to talk about monarchs just for a minute, because I try very hard to keep a lot of native uh, environment for them so that they not only will um, pollinate for me, but they will lay their eggs here. They will maybe have a nest nearby. Now, I don't know if butterflies have nests, do they? I don't know, but they do live somewhere, don't they? Um, so I grow varieties of milkweed because uh, monarchs love milkweed. And I see that Stephen uh, does that too. I also plant dill and fennel just for them. I do plant it for myself as well, uh, but I do plant some near the milkweed so that they kind of know that they're because they love to lay their eggs uh, in that environment. So I do grow some just for them. Uh, but anything that is a native to your area, and I did some searching over the last couple of days. And in the U.S., it's really easy to find out what your native plants are because you just pop in your zip code and say native pollinating plants, uh, and you'll get all kinds of lists of what bees and butterflies and good insects uh, enjoy in your area. And I also did a little looking uh, for the U.K., and there does seem to be several sites there and and i just kind of did general uh you know uk uh pollinating plants or preferred pollinators but i think you could drive down that a little um a little deeper and get it much closer uh to where you live and what um will do best for you but I think we need to we need to plant some things. But I think also just some like a zinnia, beautiful plant. Pollinators love it. I don't know that's necessarily a native plant to where I live. Uh, but I get butterflies and bees all over that all summer. And we want to encourage them not just to come and pollinate, but if they live nearby, they're more likely to visit your garden. Uh, more often. So I would say it's important to have some water sources for for them, uh, whether that's just a small dish of water that you change, you know, every time you're out watering uh, your garden or your, your allotment. Uh, maybe it's a little fountain that you have, or maybe it's just a water barrel, a rain barrel that you leave open at the top and they're able to fly in and fly out as they need to. But it's always good to have some water closely available for them. It's also uh, important to have some habitat for them. Like I said, that's why I plant uh, dill for my monarchs, just so they can uh, lay their, I guess that would be their larva, uh, and then they can eat that when they grow up or they come out of their pupae. Don't, I could be really messing up a lot of these words, so don't quote me on any of this. But you know, when they come out of their, when they, after they're a caterpillar, because they will eat the dill and stuff as a caterpillar, and then they will go into their larval state and turn into a butterfly. So you want to have stuff around that maybe even as they're coming out uh, of their little cocoon there, that they might want to hang around and stay in your garden. One of the other things that I have found works great is I let a couple of my vegetable plants just go to seed. Uh, now, it doesn't always look the best in your garden, but uh, bees and butterflies are kind of drawn to that. So um, it's not a bad thing. 
uh, if you let a few things just go to seed because you know how beautifully they can flower uh, and they're kind of wild looking. Um, yeah, so let me, I'm going to back up here just a minute and see what y'all are saying about, I see a lot of good comments. Uh, let me see. Uh, okay. I guess I'm not. Oh, Margaret Alice is saying for pollinators, um, borage is a good one. Uh, yes, uh, because I would agree with that. Um, but borage is really invasive. So you really have to keep um, a handle on borage or it will literally take over. Um, well, yeah, any of the herbs that you let flower, uh, fat, you mean you lose a little bit of the flavor of the herb, but if you don't, you know, if you can't catch it quick enough, letting something like that go to seed is only going to help the environment um, in your, in your garden. Uh, Stephen is also talking about milkweed. Yes. Um, let's see who's, who's nurturing. Francis is nurturing one little itsy bitty, uh, milkweed sprout. <laughs> well, and sometimes that's all it needs because milkweed, once it gets established, um, is a very good, a good, um, reliable plant. Um, let's see, this looks interesting. Anna Jones is saying Facelia, often grown as green manure, will be a bee magnet if left to flower. Lovely plant as well. See, I think, um, I think some of the things that go to seed are just they make beautiful flowers. And I know our goal is not to have our stuff go to seed. I mean, that's what we're trying not to do. Uh, uh, Robin is also saying blue lobelia works great for her. I have grown that several times. Haven't grown that for a while. Not sure why. Uh, let's see what Jace is saying. Uh, I've seen peacock butterflies around for a couple weeks, but also a small blue the other day which are quite rare in the UK, especially this far north. Wow. That's awesome. And I don't think we have either one of those varieties over here in the U S. So I think I, that's awesome. So whatever you're doing, um, you're definitely attracting them. Uh, Stephen from urban Buffalo farmer is saying there are four milkweed varieties native to Minnesota. And I'm growing all of these now. Wonderful. So you must have a good size growing space, is my guess. Uh, let's see, Leanne. I saw some beautiful butterfly in my garden last week. Uh, a sweet surprise, considering we are pretty cool. Uh, although I did wonder what it would be eating. Well, this is also a good time, uh, at least in my area, right now dandelions are like, they're, they're very prolific right now. So I would say, if nothing else, if you get some dandelions, and I know dandelion puts down a pretty uh, direct uh, central root that goes quite deep and it can be difficult to get rid of. Um, but right now, the bees that are out, the butterflies that are out, will be using that as a source of food for them. So, uh, and the other thing is, if you're doing this, be you need to be committed. If you really want to keep the pollinators there, you need to be committed to not using herbicides, pesticides, uh, because it's really hard to target ones that will just take out the the 
I want the insects that you don't want, but will that will leave alone the insects that you do want. So it's a really uh, it's a really tricky balance if you're trying to. I was looking into a a, a new one that I'd heard of um, over here, and you know you got to do it at night after all the good pollinators have gone to bed. Uh, but then we get a pretty good dew in the morning. So I'm thinking, doesn't that kind of reactivate it a bit? So I have chosen not to go uh, with that because I, I don't want to risk the butterflies that we do have and the bees that we do get. I just don't want to do anything uh, to damage them. Uh, Margaret Alice is saying she plants lupines and bronze fennel. They are beautiful plants. Uh, always get it, always get hit with aphids, but the tiny birds descend on them and clear the plants. Awesome. But you know, sometimes you need to do like a sacrificial aphid plant if you can, uh, so that it stays away from some of the crops that you're trying to grow. I'm just not sure how they figure out that this is the one that's there for them and not the one that I have there for me. So, uh, yeah, but thank you. Those are both beautiful. Uh, Robin is saying, I let half my mint patch flower. Yes. Um, and I think sometimes when the herbs uh, flower, they're even a little more intense because you know how great you can get oils out of your essential oils out of your herbs. I think when those go to flower, uh, there's, I think there's something in that that really attracts the pollinators because that's got to be a stronger scent to them. Uh, and I wonder if it's just more, I mean, we use essential oils uh, because we know how good they are. And I just think, well, why wouldn't the butterflies and bees also know that? Because they many times have a whole lot more intrinsic knowledge that, uh, than we do. Uh, I disturbed, um, excuse me, I disturbed a monarch butterfly during winter at the allotment. It was on the back wall of the shed where there were shelves, pots, and logs stored. Well, hopefully, I mean, if you disturbed it, you know, it doesn't mean they weren't happy to be there. Uh, oh, we have a haven for ladybugs. Margaret Alice um, is saying her you is a haven for ladybugs. They're it's full of them mid-season. Uh, I have acid soil in the planter, early flowering for bumblebees. Well, that's good to know. I wonder if a yew is one of those kinds of um, evergreens that attracts ladybugs. If there's something about your environment that causes that to happen, because ladybugs. They are so good to have in the garden. Um, they are so good to have it in the garden. Uh, my herb bed just hums in the summer. Lovely, lovely. Yeah, isn't it? I mean, I've only seen a couple of, I've seen a couple flies outside. I have seen some white caterpillar or white uh, cabbage butterflies outside. Not yet seen um, many bees. Um, uh, or, or reg, or regular butterflies, uh, cause it's still just been a bit, we had our last potential frost last night. And I think now, I think now we're really out of the woods. So I'm planting, assuming we're out of the woods. Uh, oh, purple sprouting broccoli. One of the, one of, I think one of the things that I most envious that I cannot grow here. Uh, but it goes to seed absolutely swarming with bees. Yeah, because doesn't it produce those beautiful little yellow, dainty little yellow flowers from the brassicas? They're just beautiful. Uh, but yeah, I would love, I would love to be able to grow pur purple sprouting broccoli. I've heard so much about it, uh, but it will not, it will not uh, overwinter here. So, uh, Okay. Now this is interesting. I get those. This is Sharon. I get those plastic flowers 
that hold water. I've put glass neat. Wait, I've put glass needs in one for the bees to use. And my kale has flowers now and the beans seem to love it. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying there. Cause they go into, they go, these plastic flowers that hold water go into like pots or uh, garden beds and produce and let things um, grow on. That's, that's pretty clever. Uh, and one's for the bees. Awesome. Uh, Leanne saying the space surrounding me is pretty wild still. Some of our property not developed yet. Uh, some of the things start to grow and I have lots, lots of natural habitat. I think that's the best thing. You know, we, um, we had a home one, two, it would be two houses away. We have, you know, a neighbor and then it's their neighbor. And they had about 50 or 60 trees in their backyard. I mean, this was like a wild, a really wild forest. And the house sold and new people came in. And obviously they wanted uh, more of a backyard than a forest. And I feel like we lost so much uh, habitat for these animals uh, because they were just, they were displaced because they no longer had um, just a place to, I mean, it was like really like a forest in there. Uh, so I felt, so, I felt bad for that, but I also thought, you know, this is suburbia uh, and not everybody wants that, but it made me think about, um, figuring out how to maybe add some of that back in without making my yard look like uh, a crazy forest. Um, hi, Claire. Welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, speaking of, of channels, Claire also has a channel, Growing Plotty, which I'm sure you've heard of and know about lovely channel please check hers out as well uh let me see what's this from steven welcome steven uh i'm excited this year for my flower growing season i built a greenhouse in march dash april and my wee greenhouse is full of seedlings Oh, isn't that the best? Uh, I did a trip to, and I would say this is Michigan's biggest and probably best, um, I'm going to call it the greenhouses. Um, it's called Blocks Stand and Greenhouses. And they have 46 like commercial size hoop houses, greenhouses. I mean, they're enormous. And uh, I think I will be posting that probably tomorrow or Sunday. Uh, and it was just me and a couple of friends went and I realized I had not been to a garden center since probably 2019. Uh, so it was, it was so much fun. And I was very, I was trying to be very contained with my shopping. And I was, cause I sure could have, you know, done a whole lot more damage. Uh, but it was wonderful. And, uh, there's nothing like seeing a green, like one of the greenhouses, the tomato house, thousands of tomato plants and, nothing like it. And the, you know how tomato plants smell. There's just nothing like it. So let's see what Jace has to say. Growing flowers, pollen producers also attracts lacewings and hoverflies. The adults eat the pollen, but their larvae eat aphids, which is also good. Yes. Uh, I think that's one of the beauties of 
of ladybugs too, isn't it? They just gobble up the aphids. Um, which some you know, don't sometimes you would just wonder why? Like, what is an aphid? Well, I guess it's maybe part of the food chain because things eat it. But yeah, they're so nasty. Uh oh. Mama's Oasis allotment. Most of the cabbage whites I've seen so far are in my brassica cage. Checked it and found 76. Uh, chrysalis in there. Oh, yeah, wow. Uh, we are planting out some uh, brassicas today. And I'm putting a, uh, a lovely white, uh, small very fine cloth over it until we can get the the hoop on uh because i'm not leaving i'm not leaving it for them because they will lay eggs and it's over and i've already lost the battle before it begins right let's see what claire has to say i'm letting my cavolo nero flower and at the moment to collect seeds great yes we were we were talking about how beautiful just letting some of our vegetables go to seed uh, is another wonderful way uh, to attract pollinators. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you're welcome, Claire, but I'm not really being kind. You really have a good channel. So I don't usually promote if I don't watch it myself and think uh, not only is it in, entertaining there's a whole lot of good information so okay margaret alice is leaving a gladiator parsnip to flower to see if pollinators like them i know it's an f1 but i got monster parsnips yeah yeah awesome now are you entering the uh potty mouth gladiator parsnip competition uh seems like that would be a great idea uh this is carol and she has sweet alyssum oh sweet alyssum i started growing that again last year it was like there was a hum on it almost the whole season you're absolutely right that is uh one of the absolute now it's a total favorite of mine. I will never not have that in my garden again. Uh, zinnias, cosmos, milkweed, borge, agastache, sweet peas, dill, bergamot. Yep. Chives and basil. Let the I let the herbs as well as the kale and cabbages go to seed. Absolutely. What a, I mean, that's a beautiful thing in and of itself. Uh, and I know they love... Uh, yeah, the bergamot and the dill. Oh, that's a nice combination. That is a nice combination, Carol. Thank you. Okay, we have a question. Yeah, I meant to say if anybody has a question, just capital Q. Not that I can, not that I really search for it, but it helps me just see it. Uh, Sh Sharon is asking, I have a pond at the end of my flower bed. I want to get some bug houses. Uh, where would be the best place to put them? Uh, I wonder if that's a south or a north facing. Uh, I have one of my bug homes that is facing north, uh, facing south, which means they wake up super early because that gets um, the earliest sun. And it's nice and warm, but I have another one that I'm actually going to be putting on the side of one of, of one of our trees, and that will be probably facing north. Um, I'm not, I would have to do a little research on that, depending on what you kind of want to um, attract. I would find out if they like it, you know, toasty warm, or do they like it more shaded? Um Yeah, I'm not sure that sweet alyssum, uh, 
I'm not sure sweet alyssum is an edible flower. I do know it comes from the smell. The the uh, fragrance is um, wonderful. And the bees, uh, uh, honestly, it was almost alive all summer for me. It was absolutely wonderful. Uh, but I'm not sure if that's an edible flower. I'm going to say I don't think it is, but... Yeah, Mary, you're absolutely correct. You can blast aphids with the water hose. Um, sometimes it's just helpful to blast like underneath your leaves. Um, you can get a lot of stuff off of there sometimes. Oh, Anita. What's Anita saying? Hi, Anita. When you mentioned blocks on Monday in the, I was so envious. We have a posh garden center near with mega prices there was a nursery about half an hour away that i love to go to yeah this this um and i think i think i will come up with this more as just like a vlog of the three of us being silly and buying flowers and uh just a couple plant starts of stuff that didn't do well um and i bought two carts worth of things and it was like 120 bucks which i couldn't believe because i really thought okay i've like really silly overspent um but uh it's it's beautiful they're beautiful i've had trouble starting my own spinach this year it just wanted to go to seed but immediately it just kept wanting to go to seed and go to seed so i picked up a nice little bunch of seedlings there and they're going to go in the ground today uh, because i think our weather at least i think has kind of it's kind of um going back to kind of what a normal april may early may looks like so we won't be going from the we're freezing at night and then we're up to you know 80 degrees during the day what is that like 30 degrees celsius so uh i think those days have now passed for a minute so uh oh that's really cute francis is saying growing potty plotty is a fantastic channel and it is we see claire as an honorary canuck and i know what that is because i used to think that the montreal canadians were our were the Detroit um, hockey team because that's the only one that we went to games. We went to games at, you know, to watching the Red Wings, but it was always the Canucks. So I was like, isn't that our team? I was young. I was really young. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. Uh, Stephen is asking, what are some of the flowers I'm growing this year? I am growing uh, impatience. I'm growing geraniums. I'm growing zinnias, growing sweet alyssum. Uh, I'm growing a new one this year to me. It's called lantana. Uh, almost looked like a marigold, but it's a very hot. It, it you know I think of it more in tropical places, but they're the flowers are were just stunning, so I couldn't um, I couldn't resist picking up some of those yesterday. Um, what else am I growing? I'm growing wave petunias. So they're the ones that just go, grow very long and beautiful. Uh, growing nasturtiums. Uh, I know I'm missing things. Um, growing a lot more grasses this year too. I do love, um, so I'm growing a purple. What is it? Purple. It's a purple grass. I'll think of the name. Uh, it's just beautiful and gets very full. And I'll be growing some sunflowers. Uh, let's see. I think, well, that's at least, oh, uh, asters. Asters. And I might dip my toe uh, into dahlias this year. I've not done that because of the, F there's like a lot of, you got to pull them out in the winter, store them, 
put them back in. So I'm thinking of maybe growing them in pots so that I could just pull the entire pot like into my garage, leave it over the winter and then pull it out in the spring and see maybe how that does. Because the thought of, you know, pulling them all out and I know then you can look at them and, uh, but anyway, I think, um, I think that's, that's most of what I'm growing. But once we um, start getting things out into the garden, when I do the garden tours, it'll be a lot easier to go. Here, here are the flowers and, uh, oh, and tulips. I just saw that in Mary's. Uh, yeah, I grew tulips this spring, which are just getting ready to open up. Uh, and I grew muscari, which is a beautiful little blue um it's a little beautiful little blue flower uh so that came up with my tulips um let's see oh it was the tulips in the background oh thank you uh those were from one of my friends who joined me uh at blocks garden center the other day so you'll kind of meet her. They're both very shy. Uh, so, but there were some funny moments that I think really need to be included. So I guess it's better to ask forgiveness, right? So I will just have to ask for forgiveness from her. Uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, we, we did have a lot of fun though. It was, it was great fun. Uh, let's see, uh, Jace is saying we have bug houses on sheds and I'll leave weeds and twigs in certain areas. Plus we have log piles. I th think scatter them facing different directions. Let the bugs, that's a, there's an idea. Let the bug, let the bug choose where they want to live. Absolutely. I, it's hard for me. I try to keep my like I try not to have piles. Uh, I, I, you know, but I thought this year I have to be intentional about where I might uh, put some because they need them and their, their little habitats are just going away. So I need to figure out how I can do that. Wow. Mary's saying that Google said, sweet alyssum is edible but they are kind of too pretty to eat uh wow i guess we can we can all try that uh a big box store here had 12 inch tall roma tabs wow yeah, that's ridiculous because the, the garden center I was at yesterday was selling tomatoes for 89 cents a piece. And these are beautiful, beautiful tomatoes. Beautiful. So, yeah, that is crazy. That is absolutely crazy. Because, you know, if you're getting it from a big box store, uh, they're not necessarily cared for all that well. Interesting. Sweet Alyssum is Lantana. Okay. That is so funny that you say this, Robin, because when I got the Lantana, the, the variety I got actually looks like Fruit Loop cereal. And I think I say that on that vlog because it was orange and pink and a little bit of yellow all together. I mean, it was just stunning. Uh, yes. Oh, land. Oh, in Greece, a lot covered in the hummingbird moth things. You know, uh, hummingbirds have, I have just noticed those over the past couple of years that they, they're here. Like we don't not, we do not live uh, in the country by any means. I mean, we're 15 minutes from Detroit. So uh, we're in a, we live in a city. Uh, it's a much smaller city, obviously, than Detroit, 
but we're right next to a big city. Um, yeah, so I would love to do things to attract hummingbirds this year just because they're beautiful. Uh, and they like zinnias. I have noticed them uh, over a lot of my zinnias, and that's when you just kind of notice them. Uh, and I was surprised because that's usually something that only uh, grows. Nope, lost my thought. I was reading a comment. I don't like when I do that. Oh, humming. I was talking about hummingbirds liking zinnias. Yeah, they'll just fly in. I mean, they're just, they're so fast. Those wings go like no other. Uh, I kind of can't uh, take my eyes off of them when one flies in. Yes, muscari is known as grape hyacinths. Absolutely. Um, okay, here's a question. Uh, do I grow spuds in containers? If so, what soil do you use? Uh, I have grown spuds in containers previous to this year. Um, and I would use... I usually mix like half potting soil, half composted manure uh, in there. Uh, but this year I'm trying them in the ground. Uh, first time ever growing them in the ground, but I think I think we might just do better. I'm gonna do a uh, I'm doing a pumpkin patch for all the little ones and I thought, you know what? What do little ones like to do mostly? Play in dirt and get dirty and dig things up. So I thought if I put my spuds in the, our big back um, garden on in the ground level, they just might really enjoy that. And then they can play in the sprinklers and get all the dirt off their clothes. So that was a, that was a thought. Um. Uh, Uh, do I have a pond? I do not have a pond. And I'll tell you why. We live in a very um, ordinance driven city. And for me to have an open pond, I would need to have uh, a fence around it. So that some little person doesn't come and fall into it. And quite frankly, I have a three year old that lives next door. I have a one-year-old that lives behind us and there are no fences dividing the property. So uh, I would have to be, uh, and then, you know, if you have a pond, what's the fun of having a fence around it, right? And you'd only need inches of water for a little one to um, have problems. So I would never want that. I would never want to do that, but I would love to have a pond. I'd actually rather have a fountain I just love the sound of moving water. So I do have, we have a bird bath and I do have one of those uh, solar powered little fountains that kind of floats around in it. Uh, so uh, I, I love the sound of moving water. Uh, let's see here. What else you can, you can chuck the lantana on, in the bin. Oh, <laughs> ah, I wonder if Lantana's edible because, oh my gosh, that is super pretty. Um, okay. Oh, I didn't know you guys didn't have hummingbirds over in the UK. Gosh, they're so beautiful and they're iridescent. I, they're, it looks like a shark skin suit. You know, the old shark skin suits that guys used to wear. That's what they look like. Uh, oh, <laughs> so Claire is saying, I do that too in front of customers. My own thoughts are more interesting than answering their questions and pull up hands. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, you know, here's the curse of lives is dead, 
dead airspace. So I'm trying to make sure that as I'm answering something, I'm also just trying to keep, uh, you know, keep it all loaded. So, and sometimes the comments are just wonderful and I kind of want to, uh, I want to read it all. Okay. Now this looks interesting. Have I grown? Okay. Now if this is supposed to be said, uh, British ease, I'm going to completely, oh no, I have hundred of amazing plants. Oh, in Northeast England, I was thinking New England. Okay. Uh, Serenth Perpea. That's going to be my butchering of that. Uh, offhand, I'm not sure what that is because that looks like um, the actual name of it, not the common name. So unfortunately, I'm not sure what that one is. And if anybody else might know what that is, uh, I'd be happy for you to tell me. Uh, I could do a half barrel. I'm not sure what that is referring to either. Sorry, I'm kind of missing some of these. Um, well, um, so you're talking about a swimming pool that maybe has uh, a bar access to it. Yeah, that would that wouldn't be bad. Wouldn't wouldn't argue with that being in my backyard. Uh, oh, I'd love to hear about that, Mags. Uh, She's saying in her last home, she built a small waterfall in the corner of the garden. Yeah, I I just love the sound of water moving. It's just, I don't know, it's very uh, soothing to me. Uh, of course it can, Jace. Yeah, I think we're, we might be onto something for uh, gardeners... Um, refreshments later in the day. Yes. I have done that. Uh, I have grown Vietnamese coriander because my son-in-law uh, had to do a trip on business to Vietnam. And, you know, he got all he like took Vietnamese cooking classes while he was there. It was wonderful. Uh, so I grew that. Uh, I'm not sure. You know, we don't call, we call coriander the seeds. And then we call it cilantro. So it was like Vietnamese cilantro, but it had a different leaf. It's quite beautiful. Um, I am not sure that. I'm not, I think we kept it for the seeds to do coriander, but that's a few years ago, but yeah, I did grow that. And yes. Uh, and I do recall it being kind of just slight, just enough different that, you know, this isn't just your standard coriander. Uh, but I always love to try different things as well, just to see how they, just to see how they go. Right. Cause you might find one that all of a sudden now you really like better. Um, yeah, you do have to, <laughs> Mama's Oasis is talking about hummingbirds. Uh, well, they freak you out a bit because they can almost like dive bomb, but they move so fast. It sounds like there's a fan in your ear, but they just spark around. And you're right. When I'm out there and they're out there, I don't get too much done because they don't stay long. They're, they're, uh, yeah. Francis, you, you threaten that every week. <laughs> Cause I think we, we had a, yeah. Swim up gym bar. Yes. Uh, 
yeah, I think we were teasing you the last time about that. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, Amir. Yes, Amir. Hi, welcome to. So good to have you here. Another lovely uh, YouTube channel is Amir's Allotment. Uh, you, he, he is the most gentle spirited uh, man I think I've ever met and love his um, love of nature and how much he appreciates uh, everything around him. So check out Amir's Allotment as well. Yeah, so I can't remember if we let, I, all I know is I haven't grown it again. So that might, that might tell me something. I'm not sure, but I loved how it looked. Uh, let's see. So we, have we covered everything for pollinators? I think we did. It's like a, like a trifecta. Um, you know, the, they need things to pollinate. They need some form of habitat that might be close, whether it's a bug home that you purchase or branches and sticks and things that they just like to uh, look at um, or live in, excuse me. And we need some water sources for them. Uh, and I got to do a shout out to Steve um, at Greenside Up because he built a bug Ben. If you've not seen that on his channel, you need to go check that out because when he did it, uh, and actually I, I, it's on my husband's list of things. He's a woodworker. So it's like, I would really like you to, um, build me one of these cause that was so cool. Um, so we'll see, uh, when that, when that happens, but it's, it is the coolest thing. So if you're looking for ways uh, to, you know, to make a habitat, I think what he did is like um, pretty brilliant. And um, let's see, we're now, we're now on the alcohol bend here. <laughs> uh Yeah, Sharon says the bug Ben is awesome. It was, I mean, I he put it together in no time. Um, and yeah, that was that was quite fun. So I think we've covered our uh pollinating. I think it sounds like you guys are uh kind of oh, that was my mouse. Uh it sounds like you guys, uh, I don't know how I'm gonna end this since my mouse just fell. Okay, we will figure that out. So I think on that note, I want to say thank you all so much uh, for being here. Uh, it's, it's always great to see you all and um, just chat about gardening for a little while. And so I wish you all a great week. Uh, we have a nice day today. And then I think we go into five days of rain. So I think... Uh, you know, I got to figure out if I'm going to go out there with a rain uh, bonnet on, right? And just try to get some of this stuff in the ground. But what a good time to plant a lot right before five days of rain. So anyway, uh, same time, same place next week. We might be talking about irrigation options. Uh, we might not be. Uh, I try to get somehow inspired by things that are currently going on. So I wish you all a great week. Take care, love your gardens and love your pollinators. Talk to you soon.